Our next guest is the latest strategist to slash his 2019 target, but he says new highs are coming this year. He's brought along some charts to prove it. So let's head over to the plasma where Tony Dwyer of Canaccord Genuity is standing by. Hi, Tony. Happy New Year. Hey, Mel. Thanks a lot. So obviously, October 4th, we did a we did a special on the correction and the low volatility. Clearly, we didn't think we'd have a market crash, and we have had a market crash. We've had a 20 percent decline peak to trough with a spike in volatility. So we look back at, over the course of the last 40 years to find other 20% <coughs> drops within four months, which is what categorizes a market crash. And we found three examples, 1987, 1998, and 2011. So let's take a look at how 2011 worked out. First, of course, you made your high. Then you had your 20% swoon as denoted by the circle there. Importantly, we had this reflex rally. We're currently seeing a reflex rally. It's up about 9%. This one was about 11% over the course of 13 trading days, and certainly you had a retest. All of the um, non-recession crash environments had a retest of the low. All of them did. All three of them did. And then, of course, you ended up moving to new highs. So if we go, f go forward and look at the current environment, what we have is, again, we had the high here. You had the VIX at 10. You had 61% bulls. We did the show. It was going to correct. Didn't think it was going to crash, obviously. Um, but then what you had was your initial low here around the Christmas time. The, the intraday low was the day after Christmas. And what we're, what we're seeing now clearly is this ramp and reflex rally. If you match the average of the other three, it should be about 13%. It brings you up to about 2,600 to 2,660. Once you do that, again, you retest that low. So we think over the course of the next four to five weeks, you're going to unfortunately retest that low. But once you do that, in all of these non-recession environments, you've hit a new high. So that is the opportunity not to worry about the retest, but to use it as you, to your advantage. All right. So Tony's going to walk over. And in the meantime, Guy, what yeah, do you think of these Yeah. So trades? look, on Friday you said, you know, trade or to fade in terms of the broader rally. I said fade Friday's move in the S&P. Obviously, that was wrong today. But I'm sort of, I do, I find myself in Tony's camp. I think the situation lends itself to exactly what we saw summer of 2015 into 16 on February 10th, I think, 2016. The S&P cratered down to 1810. You had a number of announcements that day. J.P. Morgan, Jamie buying back stock. You had some OPEC news. You had a Deutsche Bank bond issuance. That was the low until basically for the last however many years. So I think the situation plays out exactly like that. I think January is painful. Trough in February, then probably have a decent back half. So, Tony, um, in terms of cutting your target, you're just the latest strategist to do that. Correct. And I, I've said on the show that my target was wrong. I wanted to wait to see how much I was going to slash it based on whether the Fed acknowledged the inflation data that was coming out and the inflation break-evens, which we talked about on the show. And I've said publicly, I'll say it every time, if I get the target right, it's luck, right? Because <laughs> you're making a guess at the multiple. My new target is based upon retesting that high, which is 20 20, uh, 20, uh, 950. So that's the target. It has nothing to do with the valuation. That'd be a 17 and a half multiple. But you know that's our target. But in terms of uh, the change in what the Fed has said and the in the Fed's posture when it comes to rates and its balance sheet, I mean the Fed basically gave the markets everything that they wanted to hear, and yet you still move your target lower. So what did the Fed need to do in order for you to stick by that target? If if the main it would have been a lot Fed, lower had he not done what he did. He was reading off a sheet of paper. No matter what it was going to go. No matter what it was going to go down. has to come down. It would have been a 30 percent rally off the low. Market crashed. Listen, I'm good at being wrong. I'm also good at looking at history and data, and I go by the data. Sometimes the data is wrong. If you look at a post-crash environment, human nature is very consistent and very clear. Let's fast forward. So we've had two days where you've had 95% upside volume. I use Sentiment Trader, a guy at Odd Stats on, on Twitter, to give me you know, the history of when things like that happen. That's what happens right after you make an initial crash low. You have, two, you have big up days. It's very exciting. People think you're off to the races. And then you have this demoralizing retest of the low. And, and that's just because you have earnings season coming up. You're not sure what the Fed's going to say next. You have the trade issues. You have Brexit. Don't forget Italy. You've got a lot but of But, Tony, issues. does it make you rethink what got slammed to get us down to those lows and what is going to rally the most? Is it the things that got hit the hardest that should rebound off those technical levels, or is it the things that you want to hold the longest? So if you look at the 98 and 2011 scenario, um, financials, industrials, tech, 
Um, they generally lifted the most off of the low over the next three to six months. And then you kind of petered out depending upon what the yield curve did and, and the other issues. But again, the, the call needs to be when you crash, it's, it doesn't, it's not a fundamental situation. Right? The, you need the Fed to get a little more dovish. They did. You need the trade issue to kind of work its way through. It probably will. But ultimately, it's a human nature trade now. You crash the market. You get a reflex rally. We're in it. Same as every other one. And within four to five weeks, you retest the low. You got to buy that if you, unless you absolutely are convinced you're going in recession. Tony, thanks. Good to see you, Tony Dwyer. Can't accord. Thanks, Mel. Karen, do you believe what Tony's saying? I do. I'm not sure where trade fits into it, though. I mean, so to me, it's still the biggest question. I don't know if the charts uh, allow for that or if that uh, to me, it's the biggest question. For you, though, in order yes. to see the markets have a gain for this year. Yes. We need to see the trade issue resolved in yes. some way. Yes. Look, what was different about the market to me from October than it was the market that also had a lot of volatility from essentially February through October was that credit fell apart in October. We saw high yield fall apart dramatically. And what we've seen actually over the last couple of days is really the, the kind of a rally you've actually seen in credit, but especially high yield, that tells you that things are a lot different than the market priced at the end of the year. I would argue that we had some serious dynamics as we got into the year end with redemptions. There was zero liquidity. Uh, I think high yield, especially as it relates to energy and some retail names, is still open for question. But the recovery in credit is the healthiest part of this market recovery. It's hard to be a strategist these days in this, in this kind of market. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why I'm not. So, so it's hard just for me to spell strategist, which is why I don't have it on my little business card. I just sit here and chat Opine. every night. Opine. What's your business card say now? Just G Swizzle. Yeah, negotiator. Just G Swizzle. It's like George Clooney in one of those Oceans movies. Yeah, just it. <laughs>